everybody, welcome to my home site and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over an email that I received from John Adams as I continue to work through my emails. Now, we've already somewhat covered this event. This is that mega flash that happened. And uh, I was first told about it by Bob D. Um, I think I saw it in the comments section, I'm not sure, and then I made a video about it. And now as I'm working through the emails, I saw this one from John Adams. But there's some things I want to actually go over that we didn't really talk about last time. And this is going to be putting it kind of like in a different context. So John Adams, he recommended reading DNC uh, 8890. Now, I want to read actually from 86 because this will give us the context, really, of, of possibly some of the significance of things like this. Not just this mega flash, but all the things that are happening right now. So listen to this. Okay, starting in verse 86. Abide ye in the liberty where, uh, wherewith ye are made free. Entangle not yourselves in sin, but let your hands be clean until the Lord comes. Now, if, if there's anything that I want to come across um, to you for my channel is this. The, the, this is the important part. As we're watching for the signs of the times, it is important to watch for these things. It is important to discuss the doctrine. It is important to... Uh, you know, think about things and be thinking about this because this is going to be happening. Uh, and I think it's going to be happening in our lifetimes. I, in fact, I think it's going to be happening within the next like five to 10 years, if I'm going to be honest, but I don't know. But as we do those things, the priority should be this, not entangling ourselves in sin, having our hands clean, going to the temple partaking in the sacrament, doing family history and temple work and gathering scattered Israel and becoming a Zion people. That, that's the best thing. Those are the best things to do to prepare for the second coming. And then all this that we're doing on the channel is secondary. It's just to help us not be caught unaware when it happens, to prepare our minds and um, see it coming. Because... There's a lot of people that don't see it coming. Even people in the church that do not see this coming, they're like in a fog. You know, they're not, they're, they're just like playing everything off like, oh, no, this is just normal. And they're, they're literally waiting for President Nelson to like flat out say, the second coming is happening uh, next year. It's going to be during April General Conference. Like, it seems like that's what they're waiting for. It's not going to happen, but they have uh, over the pulpit during general conference, as we've noted with the spreadsheet that I'm that I'm doing. They are pretty explicitly telling us that it, that it is coming. Okay, for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, and it doesn't really take too much squinting or straining to see what they're trying to communicate. Okay. All right, let's move on to verse 87. For not many days hence, and the earth shall tremble and reel to and fro as a drunken man, and the sun shall hide his face and shall refuse to give light, and the moon shall be bathed in blood, and the stars shall become exceedingly angry and shall cast themselves down as a fig tree that falleth from off a fig tree. So look, most people recognize this as talking about eclipses, okay, and significant eclipses. And so, for the millionth time, you know, we're going to talk about, um, gosh, I should have put this in order, sorry. Okay, okay, we're, we're all, everyone that's watching this channel, I'm sure that you're aware of these two great American eclipses, spaced about seven years apart, crossing over the heartland of the United States. I don't need to, you know, be a dead horse, but a lot of us understand that this really is something significant. And even members or even Christians outside of our church find this to be significant 
But we, as Latter-day Saints, should find it extremely significant because the, the path of totality, where, the, where you can actually see a 100% eclipse, the first one went over Independence, Missouri, which is the, the center place of the New Jerusalem, and then the second one that's coming up in 2024 goes over Palmyra, New York, which is where God the Father and Jesus Christ appeared to the prophet Joseph Smith. And it went over the Kirtland. It's going to go over the Kirtland Temple where we had all these messengers come and Christ himself uh, delivering keys uh, for this dispensation. So extremely, extremely significant places where Christ and the Father have appeared, and then where Christ is going to appear during the second coming. So, this is not any ordinary set of eclipses. Okay, I'm just going to say it. These are, this is not ordinary, and statistically very, very, very improbable that we would have these two so close together going over these significant, significant church sites. So, as we're reading verse 87, okay? And I think uh, when you look in General Conference, it's basically been said several times that these things have <clears throat> have happened. Now, now don't quote me, because I, I have to go back and check for sure, but a lot of times when people read verses like this, they think, oh, we have not seen this yet. But when you, when you read General Conference, there are a lot of times that they have said it. Okay, and there's going to be one specific example that we're going to go over in this video in just a little bit. Okay, now, the stars shall become exceedingly angry and shall cast themselves down as a fig tree, or uh, as a fig that falleth from a fig tree. So look, this is another thing that we've covered on the channel, but there, there's actually an additional uh, new thing that I want to cover. So we talked about we talked about this right here, the Shelyabinsk Russia meteor. Now, if you didn't watch this video, this picture right here, at the time that this happened, the sun was not up over the horizon yet. So this right here that looks like the sun and lighting up the earth like it's the sun, that's the meteor. That's the meteor. And it was powerful. It injured people. It damaged buildings. Um, go back and watch the video that I did about it for all the full details. But the thing that I want to point out in this video is that... Uh, okay, so it had 30 times the yield of the nuclear bomb over Hiroshima. 30 times. Now, a lot of you are probably aware of this event right here. This happened in 1908 called the Tunguska event in Siberia. Um, it's not nearly uh, as well documented because of the time that it happened. So there weren't dash cams, cell phones, um, you know, very good video equipment back then uh, available. And, e and even if it happened nowadays, I, I almost wonder if it would because this was like a very remote uh part of Russia. So here you see these trees uh, that are all knocked down um, parallel to each other because uh, they, they got knocked down away from the center of the blast. Okay, and then here's another picture. O only a few tre trees still kind of remain and stand up at everything else. And, and it all happened like in a circle. So um, all the trees are like in a circle pointing away, falling away from the blast. That happened in midair is what they're, they're thinking. So this, now remember, even though this happened in 1908, 19, 1908 is in this dispensation. And this is after the time of Joseph Smith and Brigham Young. This qualifies as a last days event. I think sometimes we make the mistake of think, think, thinking that all the signs of the last days are supposed to happen to us or they haven't happened already. But I think that the entirety of the dispensation um, has these signs. Uh, one of which is the Civil War, which is specifically called out in the Doctrine and Covenants. Um, 
but also things like this and then the world wars that we've had and the the cold war you know that that was like the biggest rumor of wars you know when you're reading the scriptures that we've probably that the world has probably ever seen <laughs> Wars and w rumors of wars. The Cold War, it, it was one big rumor of war. Um, okay, so you remember that the Shelyabinsk was 30 times uh, Hiroshima. This one was 100, 185. So 30 compared to 185 Hiroshima bombs. That is pretty incredible. There were a few things I wanted to read from this article. This is from NASA. Okay. The year is 1908, and it's just after 7 in the morning. A man is sitting on the front porch of a trading post at Vanavara in Siberia. Um, little does he know, and, if you, and I know that's probably pronounced Wanawara because they do the Vs uh, different, that like reverse, just like Germany, but whatever, who cares? Um, you know what I mean, Wanawara, Siberia. Little does he know, in a few moments, he'll be hurled from... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, the, that's my kind of humor right there. <laughs> Okay, L little does he know, in a few moments, he'll be hurled from his chair, and the heat will be so intense he will feel as though his shirt is on fire. Uh, that's how the Tunguska event felt, 40 miles from ground zero. 40 miles! You know, if, you, if you're driving in a car, you know, typically, like, freeway speed, because it's like 65 miles an hour, but, so that's basically, you know, about a 40 minute drive on the freeway, uh, maybe a little bit less. Uh, today, June 30th, 2008, is the 100th anniversary of that ferocious impact near the uh, Podkamenaya Tunguska River in remote Siberia. And after 100 years, scientists are still talking about it. So when you think about the impact that events have, you know, we have this one that happened well within th this dispensation, and it's still affecting us today. They're still talking about it. I would say this is a sign of the times. Now, look look what it says later on in this. At first, the locals were reluctant to tell Kulik about the event. They believed the blast was a visitation by the god Ogdi, who had cursed the area by smashing trees and killing animals. Now, whatever their religion, their native religion, they, they believed that this was an act of God. For all intents and purposes, they viewed this as an act of God. Okay, um, And that's significant, because a lot of these events, that I believe that's the intention, is to... Uh, look, they, they were they were scared. They were afraid, and maybe a little bit repentant. Even though, I mean, I don't I don't know their religion, but who knows how this may have affected affected them in the long run? If you were to take one of these people, watch them from pre mortality to mortality, even though they had this uh, very possibly pagan religion, I don't know what this is. Um, this is something that marked their lives, and maybe later. Maybe later in life, or even uh, in the afterlife, in the spirit world, this will have <clears throat> stayed with them. And then when they realize, um, or they learn about Christ, and if they if they kind of like think back on this, then they may reinterpret this event later on and be like, "Oh, you know what? That was not Ogdi. That was that was the Lord. That was the Lord." So. <sighs> The, the interpretation of some of these events and the consequences that result, um, I think we, we can't always tell right away. And, it, and it's complex. Um, okay. I think that was... 
Okay. Well, okay, there's some more. A century later, some still debate the cause and come up with different scenarios that could have caused the, the explosion. But the general the generally agreed upon theory is that on the morning of June 30th, 1908, a large space rock about 120 feet across entered the atmosphere of Siberia and then detonated in the sky. Okay. So um when we're when we're going back here and we're talking about the stars becoming exceedingly angry and shall cast themselves down as a fig that falleth from off a fig tree, you know I think that these probably qualify. Now there's some that are probably like, no, no, this is nothing. You haven't seen anything yet. There has to be. <laughs> It has to be, you know, the sky has to be red and there has to be meteors coming in from all over the place all on the same day. And um, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that that's the case. I think that this is a description of the stars becoming exceedingly angry and casting themselves down to the ground. Okay, well, let's continue. And after your testimony cometh wrath and ind indignation upon the people. Now, this is talking about after missionary work. Now, we've talked about that at length on the channel. There, there's many of us that feel that this event right here, which interestingly happened with an earthquake, uh, the earthquake in Magna, Utah, and it was something like a five, maybe it was like a 5.8 or something like that, I want to say. But whatever the case, it caused the trumpet of Angel Moroni to fall out of his hands. Okay, you and me, many of you and me, we view this as an act of God. It's sending a signal to those that are watching for the, the signs of the times. Okay, and it's just, you know, otherwise it's just coincidental that that's about the time that missionary work kind of takes a big hit because of coronavirus. This happened uh, before the missionary work kind of stopped for a while because of coronavirus or got significantly altered. And you had all the missionaries that were called home from foreign missions and missionary work became um, more of like internet and Zoom type missionary work. Now things have seemed to have pretty much somewhat gotten back to normal, but you know, we've wondered, you know, is this the time where, um, you know, the time we're now in the time after our testimony, even though we're still doing mission work. And I expect that mission work will continue uh, from now to the second coming and then obviously into the millennium. But when the Lord is talking about after your testimony, have we already done the bulk of it? Are we in the, the transition phase? The transition from the time of the Gentiles to the time of the Jews. And um, it could very well be that it's a transitional period of several years, or I, I don't know. But I think that you have to stop and think about this. I really do. This happening in 2020, on top of all everything else going on in 2020, it's amazing. And look down here, the horn is all like bent uh, out of shape. That's, <sighs> this is quite the picture. Um, there's that. Okay. So what else? Did I, uh, okay. Let's go back here. So after your testimony cometh wrath and indignation upon the people. So if this point has been reached, if we've reached this point, what happens after that? For after your testimony cometh the testimony of earthquakes, and uh, there have definitely been a lot of really big earthquakes, uh, especially last year, that shall cause groanings in the midst of her, and men shall fall upon the ground, and shall not be able to stand. And also cometh the testimony of the voice of thunderings and the voice of lightnings. Now, this is why um, John Adams is recommending this. This is what made him think to send me this. Now, uh, this was all like these mega flashes. These all occur like cloud to cloud within the atmosphere. It's not to the ground. So it didn't cause uh, like damage. 
that I'm aware of. Um, but you can still see this as a sign. And it's interesting because not only was there this, this is like a record breaking, like the largest mega flash on record. But there was also, okay, let's see. The new record flash went far beyond the definition. Uh, the new record for a longest single flash covered a horizontal distance of approximately 477 miles. That's an interesting number. From Texas to Louisiana, April 29th, 2020. The impressive distance is comparable to the stretch between New York City and Columbus, Ohio. Um, there was also another thing. Let's see. Um, okay, here it is. Though, okay, sorry, I should zoom in. Though it broke the record for distance, it did not break the record for longevity, which went to a, a different mega flash in South America lasting more than 17 seconds. This is another engine, this number right here, 17, um, this is one of the times that it comes up. I've, I've mentioned before that it seems like since I've done the channel, this number keeps coming up. President Nelson, he's the 17th. Uh, president of the church. Okay, we had 2017 where all those incredible things happened. We had a muamua, which was the first observed strange, uh, well, first observed object in a strange one at that that came from outside the solar system, and still have scientists talking about it. We had the first great American eclipse. That was the first full year of President Trump's presidency. That was the year that he moved the embassy to Israel, or I mean, to um, from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem, which they, the Jews, viewed as a huge, huge thing, um, biblical uh, even. There were a lot of things that happened in 2017. It was a special year. So, and there's there's other things you know that get, gets into the realm of um, the theories about secret combinations and a certain thing that happened during the Trump years. And uh, this channel is not about that. I don't even know really what to think about it, although I'm very aware of it. But there was also that that was going on that is associated with this number. Um, so yeah, just a lot of weird seventeen things. So anyway. That's just a side note. So anyway, but um, so we had not only the the longest one ever recorded here in the United States, but uh, as far as like distance long, but we have this one that lasted for 17 seconds, so the longest duration in South America, and that was let's see, it was documented October 31st oh, on Halloween, uh, 2018, over uh, over Uruguay. So it's it's weird. It's weird. So anyway, yeah, the voice of lightnings. We we literally just had the longest voice of <laughs> the longest voice of, of lightning um and thunder. I wanna okay, wait, I wanna see that again. Where sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's this first tab. Thunderstorm, the mega flash lasted for seventeen seconds. Um, I don't. Could you hear it though? Uh, whatever. I don't know. So it was the longest one by duration. I. I don't think that you can hear mega flashes because it's. Um, it's like that. I think it's called dry lightning. I'm not sure. It's just like the lightning that happens cloud to cloud, and you don't hear it. So, but whatever the case. Uh, we're taking notice of it, and um, yeah. So, it also cometh the testimony of the voice of thunderings and the voice of lightnings, and which you know, thunderings is the voice of lightnings. But so I guess you could look at just lightning events, and the, here's two, here's two within the last several years, and the voice of tempests. Uh, yes, there have been a lot of those going on. Um, too much to cover in this video, but I, I have covered this in other videos. And the voice of the waves of the sea heaving themselves beyond their bounds. Now, this has been specifically quoted by general authorities. I don't have it pulled up in this, pulled up in this video, but you can find it. They've talked about this. They've warned um, the church, like, hey, we are living in these times, DNC 8890. And uh, we've covered this 
um, uh, several different times, including the most recent one that happened in Tonga at the beginning of the year. That was kind of like the the thing that started it off this year was that major uh, volcanic eruption near Tonga, which was the loud the loudest uh, since the 1800s. It was heard all the way in Alaska, and it caused a tsunami. It hit the United States, but only caused like minimal damage, uh, if any at all. But it definitely caused damage in, among the Tongan Islands. So we've had that. And then I found this really cool website here. This is called storymaps.argis.com. So tsunamis of the 21st century. Now, I, I would recommend you come check this out because... I don't know. I just I like how it's laid out. It's very simple. the 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 visuals are 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 pretty stunning. Okay, so we had the 2004 Sumatra earthquake and tsunami. This is the one that I heard about when I was on my mission, but apparently this made really big news and they announced it on my mission. We were having a, a what was it? I think it was just like a zone meeting, and then. They, they were instructed, the zone leaders were instructed to bring this up, that, that this happened. Um, so th this was major, okay, a magnitude 9.1 earthquake. That, that is huge. Um, okay, so on December 26th, 2004, a magnitude 9 9.1 earthquake, now known as the Great Sumatra Andaman Earthquake, caused the deadliest tsunami in history, killing more than 230,000 people across 14 different countries located around the Indian Ocean. The tsunami waves rose as high as 100, oh my gosh, as high as 100 feet and traveled more than 2.5 miles inland. So th this was no joke. This was no joke. Um, th think of all the areas that you know of that have populations of about 100,000. So I'm thinking of, okay, let me see. I think, I think West Valley in Utah, let's see, populate, okay, let's do this. Largest cities in Utah by population. Let's just go here, utahdemographics.com. Well, here you go. So now, th now we're talking about not the metro area. Okay, we're not talking about. So when we when it says here Salt Lake City, it's talking about the actual city limits of Salt Lake City. So that tsunami basically destroyed Salt Lake City, the populate like the amount of people, and then some, because Salt Lake City is one hundred ninety nine thousand. Uh, West Valley is 140. So wait, what was it again? It was uh, 230,000. So yeah, it's like twice. Uh, it, it's it's about twice West Jordan or twice Provo. Again, just talking about Provo, the city itself, not the whole metro area of Provo. So that's just to give you an idea of how, how devastating this was. Definitely a sign of the times and definitely the sea heaving itself. Be, how's it worded? The sea heaving themselves beyond their bounds. Okay, so we had that. Um, the, tw the 2006 Pangandaran earthquake and tsunami, which I hadn't heard of, 668 dead. 65 missing, 9,299 injured. Okay, there's a picture of it right there. Just really horrible. Um, oh, this it looks like this is the aftermath. I don't know what all this stuff is down here. Okay, I can't tell if that's water, but it looks like it's some, I don't know. I don't think it's water. Okay, the 2007 Solomon Islands earthquake, 52 dead, 100 injured. 2009 Samoa earthquake and tsunami. So, okay, so there was that one that happened, and now they got hit again this year. Uh, casualties: 189 in French Polynesia, 149 in Samoa, 31 in American Samoa, Samoa, and 10 in Tonga. And of course, all these have massive damage. 
the 2010 Chile earthquake, a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake. Um, there's a tsunami. Okay, now this one. This will forever be burned in my memory because uh, I was home, I was not on my mission, and th the the footage from this is just jaw-dropping. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Because this right here, okay, so if you're looking for spectacularism, and I don't mean that in a mocking way, if you're looking for incredible biblical type looking events in the classic sense, um, like a movie, here it is right here. This happened. This was Japan, 2011, and oh my gosh, this was crazy. Um, two, okay, 228,863 people had been moved away. Oh, okay. Okay, so there were 15,899 deaths from this. 6,157 injured. Um, yeah, this, oh my gosh. I, I could not, I just, I could not believe it when this was happening. The, the second coming had kind of dropped off my radar for a time uh, during that period. But when this happened, it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is a, this is a sign of the second coming. It was so hor it was so horrific. Um, okay. The 2015 Chile earthquake and tsunami, 15 dead, six missing in Chile, one dead and one injured in Argentina, 9,000 left homeless. The 2018 Sulawesi earthquake and tsunami, I, I, I don't remember hearing about, I, I don't, I honestly, I don't remember this at all. Um, 4,340 dead, almost 11,000 injured, 667 missing, 70,000 homes destroyed. Okay, so this was in Indonesia. My gosh. Okay, and that's it for this. And then they, they don't have yet, If I don't know if they're going to update this, but they don't have the, the most recent Tongan tsunami. So, yeah, the, the sea is definitely heaving itself beyond its bounds. Definitely. And then after that, okay. So th th these are the reasons why that I really do think that this is where we're at. That honestly, honestly, that the testimony um, from us through missionary work is, if it's not over yet, it is, I think it's coming to an end pretty quickly. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if by the Lord's standard, the time of the Gentiles is, for all intents and purposes, over. Now, again, that doesn't mean that missionary work wouldn't continue, because I think it'll continue all the way until the millennium, until um, everyone is either, in, in the millennium, everyone's either passed away from the, the old generation or converted to the church. Okay, and then, and the angel shall fly, fly through the midst of heaven, crying with a loud voice, sounding the trump of God, saying, Prepare ye, prepare ye, O inhabitants of the earth, for the judgment of our God is come. Behold and lo, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And immediately there shall be there shall appear a great sign in the heaven, and all people shall see it together. Um, and then later it's talking about the silence in heaven, and then the translation and the resurrection. Now, an interesting thing in verse 91, okay, listen to this. All things shall be in commotion, and surely men's hearts shall fail them, for fear shall come upon all people. Now, I did a video specifically about this because President Nelson, I have this pulled up in the Scripture Citation Index, President Nelson mentioned this in April conference of 2021. So just last year. We're still less than a year since he said this. He says, let me zoom in. Zoom in. We live in a time prophesied long ago when all things shall be in commotion and surely men's hearts shall fail them for fear shall come upon all people. And here's the reference, DNC 8891. 
That's what we're talking about right here. After all these other things um, happening. After all these other things happening, he's saying that we're living right now in verse 91. Now, you know, maybe not in a very strict sense, like this is where we're at in the timeline, but but maybe, <laughs> maybe it kind of sounds like he's kind of talking like that. That was true before the pandemic. Yeah, look at all those things that happened before the that we were just talking about. And it will be true after. Commotion in the world will continue to increase. In contrast, the voice of the Lord is not a voice of a great tumultuous noise, but it is a still voice of, per of perfect mildness, like a whisper, and it pierces even to the very soul. In order to hear the still voice, you too must be still. Uh, for a time... The pandemic has canceled activities that would normally fill our lives. Soon, we may be able to choose to fill that time again with the noise, uh, with the noise and commotion of the world, or we can use our time to hear the voice of the Lord whispering His guidance, comfort, and peace. Okay, so I, I just think it's it's really interesting that he decided to quote this uh, so recently after all these things have happened. And yeah, he says that more is going to happen, and we're going to be watching. That's the point of this channel, is to watch, to to keep our heads on a swivel and watch what's happening. But I, I, I would argue that our, so much has already happened that I, I think that we're super, super, super close. Um, and when I say super, super, super close, like I said, within like 10 or 5 to 10 years, I, I would guess. So... Anyway, uh, thank you, John Adams, for um, emailing me about this. Um, if anyone else, if you have anything else uh, to cover, uh, you know, I, I won't guarantee that I'm going to cover it. It just depends on uh, if it's relevant to the channel or if we've ever, if we've covered it before or if there's like something new about it, if we have covered it before. But feel free to email me. It's in the description below. Um, also, make sure to leave your comments about this. If you had any thoughts or impressions, put that in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Make sure to share it, especially with people that don't think that things are happening. Because they are. And this is just, just a tiny sliver uh, of it. There's so many more things that we can talk about. That's why I have a whole channel, because there's so much to talk about. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.